Imagine a wedding that looks like it came straight out of a Hollywood movie. The groom and his guys aren't actors, though. They're some of the most wanted drug criminals in the world. Let's dive into some of the most fascinating weddings across the world. In other words, cartel weddings. Often attended by not only the groom's guests, but the DEA as well. These weddings have had far-reaching implications for the cartels. Interestingly, some of these weddings have been held inside of prison premises. How they managed to get permission for that is another story. The expensive jail wedding of Terence John Thornbury is an interesting case that has recently caused a lot of outcry. This wedding went against all standards and rules. It took place at the Palin Creek Correctional Facility in Queensland, Australia. Imagine a place inside a jail where 30 invited guests and inmates ate prawns and steaks while being surrounded by expensive cars. Thornbury, who is serving a 10-year jail sentence for his part in a large-scale cannabis smuggling operation, stood there while the bride, Jessica Salmon, walked down the aisle in a standard white dress. There was a celebrant at the event which got a lot of negative feedback. Anastasia Palachuk, the premier of Queensland, and Deb Frecklington, the leader of the opposition, both called it a mockery of the legal system. They were disgusted and worried about what it meant that such a fancy event was being held in a jail. Because of the backlash, big changes were made. According to Nine News, all wedding events with guests in jails are now illegal. However, marriages can still happen with special permission from a deputy commissioner. But not every wedding in a drug group takes place in a prison. Take the wedding of Patty Hubba O'Connor as an example. His story sounds like it belongs in a crime novel. In a past, this guy was in charge of a huge crime organization. He chose to get married in style. And when I say style, I mean a wedding that cost a lot of money and had all the bells and whistles of a fancy party. But there was a catch. The men standing next to him, his groomsmen, were not just his friends, they were also drug sellers, who were important members of his notorious gang. Now picture this, a fancy hotel with expensive watches and champagne that flows like water. It's all paid for by the dark world of drug trafficking. Not only were these guys enjoying a wedding, they were also showing off their criminal success in the fanciest way possible. But how did Hubba become so famous? It's a story about wanting power and being driven to get it. Hubba started on the streets and worked his way up, building a network so big that it controlled the flow of drugs across the whole area. He did it in style. We're talking about vacations in faraway places, Rolexes, and everything else. All crime stories have dark turns and twists that you don't see coming, though. Hubba's life wasn't all parties and fancy things. It required both smart moves and harsh choices. He was very good at getting around the rules and was always one step ahead. Now that being said, every power comes to an end. Set up by the cops, Operation Sunny is a special operation meant to bring down Hubba's empire. And it did. Which is why he was eventually caught and convicted. He played hide-and-seek with the law all of his life. He thought he was smarter than everyone else and even ran his business from a vacation home in Bulgaria, where he didn't think Northern Irish law could reach him. It turns out that no one is safe, though. Operation Sunny, the name of the special police team, was like a well-thought-out trap set to catch Hubba and his friends. It took years and hundreds of police officers to carry out a complicated web of monitoring and undercover operations. The operation's success felt like the most exciting part of a crime movie. Hubba and his crew were once unbeatable, but now they're caught in the web that they thought they could avoid. The cases that followed were a show and showed how bad their crimes were, ranging from drug trafficking to laundering money. They didn't just do drugs, they also lived a fancy life thanks to their illegal business, which included expensive vacations, fancy cars, and those flashy Rolexes. Misha, Hubba's wife, was eventually found guilty as well, not of dealing drugs but for laundering the dirty money. Now let's turn our attention to the Kinahan's wedding. On the summer day of July 15, 2017, Daniel Kinahan exchanged vows with Quiver Robinson in the grandeur of Dubai's Burj Al Arab Hotel. 
The extravagant affair, celebrated by some of the planet's most notorious drug barons, was to have widespread consequences. What set this wedding apart was the covert surveillance by the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration, or DEA. In case you're unaware, the Kinahan Cartel is led by Daniel Kinahan, his father Christy Dapper Don, and his brother Christopher Jr. and their associates. They are at the center of a violent feud with the Hutch Gang, and are known for dealing in large amounts of cocaine, guns, and money. In 2016, Daniel just barely escaped being killed at Dublin's Regency Hotel. He left just before the attack on his friend David Byrne which was planned by people dressed as police officers and sadly killed David. The Kinahan hutch fight got worse because of this event, and the Kinahan family had to move from Ireland to Amsterdam, Spain, and finally Dubai. A fight was still going on in Ireland, but the wedding itself had no signs of it. While no one knew it, the DEA was keeping a close eye on the guest list. At the time, Dutch police were looking into it after Nabel B, a former member of Rudowan's Tagi gang, made some shocking claims. This witness linked a number of bad guys such as Tagi, Ricardo El Rico, Melme Vega, Nelfel Farzi, and the Italian mob boss Rafael Imperiale. These powerful crooks controlled a big part of the cocaine trade in Europe. They formed what became known as the Super Cartel. They got the most out of their operations by working together and sharing resources, which gave them access to key South American contacts, smuggling lines, and ways to launder money. At the same time, the DEA agents were probably pleased that big-name criminals like these were at the wedding. Rudawan Tagi was a major player in the Dutch criminal underworld. He controlled major European ports and was linked to many murders and drug trafficking. Farzi was later given 18 years in prison for his part in a fight between Dutch gangs. Along with Imperiale, El Rico and Gassanin grew their crime networks around the world. Gassanin was in charge of a lot of the cocaine production in Peru. The men in these luxurious Dubai hotels didn't know that the crackdown was coming because they weren't afraid of being sent back to prison. Global law enforcement got more and more angry about this situation. El Rico was caught and given a sentence soon after the wedding. When encrypted PGP messages were found, they led to more arrests and showed how the super gang worked. By 2018, Dubai started arresting and extraditing well-known crooks because of pressure from other countries. Tagi's capture in 2019 was a turning point that showed how Dubai's position had changed. But some gang members like Daniel Kinahan were still on the run, and no one knew where he was. The Dutch almost caught Daniel Kinahan, but they thought he was Tagi and let him get away for a while. Imperiali's arrest and following agreement to cooperate with the police had a big effect on the criminal underworld in 2021. Kinahan may have left Dubai when he felt the net getting tighter. At the same time, Dubai increased its work with law enforcement agents from other countries. Balkan boss Edin Gassanin was caught in November of 2022, but surprisingly, they let him go. No one knows where he is now. Even though the U.S. had put bans on the Kinahan cartel, Gassanin and Kinahan's future is still unknown. About 500 people were arrested in Dubai's tough campaign against foreign criminals in two years, which made the city's reputation as a safe haven for criminals look bad. However, police still don't know where important people like Gassanin and Kinahan are. For similar content, don't forget to check out the other videos on your screen.